Hi, I'm Larry Quistgart with Medallion Financial Distributors. As an insurance marketing organization, uh, we do more than just offer product to our financial advisors, our clients, and customers. Uh, we provide tools and services to help you in growing your business. To that end, I'm with Peter Montoya here of Marketing Library, and actually I've known Peter for, gosh, I think it's been close to 15 years or more, uh, when I actually ran a broker-dealer uh, and then registered investment advisor. And what I found was that the financial advisor wanted to, to market but didn't know how. They, they needed content, they needed help. Um, and Peter actually created a niche. So Peter, before we go into your company, tell me a little bit about yourself, where you started, why you're focused in on marketing. So back in 1997, I also recognized that financial advisors needed to know marketing strategies and also how to implement marketing. Many financial advisors at one point in time were with large broker dealers, wirehouses, or insurance companies. They went independent and all of a sudden they didn't have the same kinds of marketing support they used to have. So they needed both marketing training, marketing strategies, and marketing imp implementation. So back in 1997, I at first started an advertising agency. And as an advertising agency, we created um, what we'll call collateral. Mm -hmm. Brochures, business cards, logos, and websites. And also gave financial advisors the strategies of how to attract and keep more clients. So, okay, let's go back a little bit. Why would, why would a financial advisor need or want to market? <laughs> well, I, as you know, in financial services today, uh, it's all about attracting the clients. Mm -hmm. It's all there is to it. So if you can be the world's greatest financial advisor, you can know how to protect assets, grow assets, create income, do planning, but if you don't have any clients, right. <laughs> uh, you will not, uh, you'll starve, long and short of it. So oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, the most successful financial advisors are the best marketers and sometimes they're average advisors. We don't like to see that. We don't see good advisors who are also great marketers as well. Okay, so now, uh, got a little bit about you. Uh, what is this marketing library? Uh, was it marketinglibrary.net or what was the name of the company? Yep, it's marketinglibrary.net. Okay. And the reason I started it, well, once again, going back 15 years ago, I was really, when I did my keynote presentations or my two-day seminars, I would give financial advisors the strategies. I'd say, here's what you need to do. But then financial the advisors would get the strategies and they didn't know how to implement. So Marketing Library was an, my attempt, a very successful attempt, to help financial advisors not only give them the strategies, but also give them the tools to actually be able to implement it. Advisors are way too busy uh, either meeting the clients, doing sales, uh, meeting um, regulatory requirements, uh, handling operations to actually be writing client letters or economic updates or financial articles. So Marketing Library, very simply, we create all the content an advisor might need to send to a client, a prospect, friends or family, or what we'll call a professional referral source. When we say content, it means we write client letters, uh, pr prospect letters, economic updates, financial articles, social media content, happy birthday letters, Basically, anything that an advisor would want to send to a client, a prospect, or a friend, we have written. Better yet, if the advisor is associated with a broker-dealer, we have a relationship with over 100 broker-dealers in which we provide compliance approval. So if they're registered with a broker-dealer, there's a very good chance it's compliance reviewed. So they can log into our website, download the content as a Word document that's already been compliance approved, then oh, they can personally brand it. I'm, I'm really big into personal branding. I wrote a book called The Brand Called You. So they can customize it and then mail it, email it to as many clients or prospects they like. So uh, we've got three different aspects of Marketing Library. You've got Marketing Library, you've got Marketing Library Pro, and then you've got the social media aspect to it. Go into a little bit on the Marketing Pro. Sure. The biggest thing between Marketing Library and Marketing Pro is as follows. Marketing library is what we call do-it-yourself distribution. We have written it, uh, they, the advisor downloads it as a Word document and then they customize it and they can send it out. They can distribute it however they might like. With Marketing Pro, we will actually do the mail or email for them. And the best part about Marketing Pro is we have what's called set it and forget it campaigns. So they can create different segments of their clients. Their A clients, B clients, C clients, doctors, clients who have bought variable annuities and create different marketing campaigns for each segment 
turn them on, and each little client group will receive a different campaign. Wow. And it allows them to nurture them, uh, keep them as clients, make more referrals, and generate more sales. So intuitively, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that it all makes sense. The more I touch people, uh, not physically, but with, with letters and content and emails, uh, the better off I'm going to be because they see me as a, um, as a trusted source. Is, is, that, is that true? I mean, that's just an intuition. Is that true? Uh, absolutely. I, I think one of the marketing leaders in financial services, Bill Good, my friend, once said, the first rule of business is keep what you got. Hmm. First rule of business. And I ask advisors all the time, how many contacts do you have with your average client per year? A contact could be an email, mail, or a phone call. How many contacts do you have with your average client per year? And most advisors say three or four contacts per year. I'll ask them, is that enough if you want to keep the relationship, generate more sales from that relationship, and more referrals? And they say, of course not. So how many contacts should you have with your average client per year? I'll, I give advisors three different numbers, a low, a moderate, and a high, and I'll let them pick the frequency that's most comfortable for them. A low number, bare bones minimum, is probably a, a five. It's a quarterly newsletter or an economic update, one per quarter, plus a birthday message. So that's minimum, bare bones minimum, that's five. A, a moderate number is probably 13. Uh, that's a monthly newsletter and then a birthday message, that's 13. And my most successful clients will do well over 60 touches per year. 60? I know, it seems like too much, right? That's a weekly economic update, that's 52 of them, then a birthday message, and then usually some other holiday greetings during the course of the year. And I get that same reaction too from a lot of advisors. I would never do 60. My clients will report me as spam, they won't call me back, they'll tell me to take off the list. What it all boils down to is, it's because those people don't know you. Right. I mean, would you report your friend as spam if they were sending you 52 <laughs> messages? Of course not. Right. You might not read it, you might delete it, but you would never call it spam, you would never say take me off the list because they're, they're your friend. So if an advisor has had, had no contact with their clients for five or six years and all of a sudden start uh, putting out 60 emails per year, of course the people are going to be a little offended because I haven't heard from them. So it boils down to the friendship factor. So kind of ease into it then instead of all of a sudden drop it. Many advisors are going to have to do that because their clients honestly don't know who they are. Sure. But for an advisor who is regularly doing client events, has annual meetings, they can start doing 50 or more contacts per year without a problem. And it's really advisable. The main reason you do so many contacts, and I, I get this question all the time, you know, my clients won't read it. The point is, is you are sending it, mm -hmm. and every time you're sending it, you're making a, a, a psychological deposit in their, in their little memory saying, I'm thinking about you, I care about you, and when you're ready, I'm here for you to answer your questions. That's why the contact is so important. So the, the contact then, I mean, you, you referenced spam and email, but do you also send it out in, in you know, the regular mail, the regular U.S. Postal Service? We love a combination of email and direct mail. It is really important. And the reason is this. Larry, what kind of mail do you get at home? It's probably largely two categories. What kind of mail do you get at home? I get junk and bills. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's very, very rare that you receive a personal card right. or a personal letter. And when you do, it makes a really big impact. And that's why we like a combination of email and direct mail. So here's our rule of thumb. We recommend email for anything that's weekly, monthly, or urgent. So whenever there is breaking news around the world, Marketing Library will create uh, an article explaining what is happening. And if it's urgent and you're, it's on your clients' minds, we should, you should have that out the very day that it happens within, within 24 hours. A lot of advisors say, well, gosh, I can't do that because compliance won't approve it. Well, with Marketing Library, they do. So you can get it out very, very quickly. So if it's weekly, monthly, uh, or time sensitive, use email and use mail for everything else. Sure. So let's go a little bit farther out. And you mentioned this book. The Brand Called You is the book. And I wrote the first version of it back in 1997, specifically toward financial advisors. And I've written a couple different versions of it since then. And the brand, branding is really important. Personal branding is really important. But a lot of advisors really don't understand what the word brand means. Sure. It's kind of an obtuse term. And a lot of advisors go, brand, yeah, I need that. What does it mean? And the best way to describe a brand is a relationship. That's what a brand really is. And for financial advisors, their personal relationship between them and their clients is the most important asset they have.
Hmm. And so the book talks about how an advisor strategically builds more deeper, effective relations with their clients. So they're, they're their first person, uh, the advisor is the first person who gets called when a client has a financial issue. Peter, thank you. Thank you. You know, as Medallion Financial Distributors, we bring to you the tools and techniques to help you in building your business. One of those tools is marketing. Uh, with Peter Montoya and with MarketingLibrary.net, we're able to actually help you in growing your business and expanding your business in a way that you never thought possible. I encourage you to go to our website, www.medallionfin.com, and explore Marketing Library. You'll find out more about how this can actually expand your business and grow your business, and then reach out to your wholesaler. Call us at 800-727-9258 and talk to us about Marketing Library and how you can build your business through marketing. Thank you.